Three horses and riders now join Michael Poulin in the arena. Shelley Francis on Picant, Sharon Poulin on the Duke of Earl, and Tooney Full on Pomerol. The topic is Passage and Piaf, as Michael discusses the preparation. Okay, we have established a nice collected trot. I do some tests, too, to tell, tell myself where I am with each horse. I'll show you what these tests are. Just to send him a little bit forward, then collect him carefully. Well, well, not so much, not so much, a little bit. Where are you going? Thank you. That's, well, not too much. Easy, easy, good girl. When you bring him back, bring him back more on the, the outside rein. Now, each of these riders ride with me and work with me so they, they know my technique. So tuning on the next long side, the same as with normal. Carefully collect him, bring him back. What's enough? Whoa, whoa, not so much. Easy. Take your time. Bring him back really slowly and try just a few short steps. Bring him back. Try just a few short steps. Not so much the inside rein. A love tap with the whip. A love tap. Yep, good. Next long side, the same. Put your legs forward just a little bit when you go forward. Bring him back when you bring him back. Keep the neck absolutely straight. Bring him back. A little bit, a few more steps this time. Just, just a little tap with the whip. Not so much left rein. A little tap with the whip. Super. That's enough. That's enough. Pat him. Pat him. Good. Good. And walk. Long range. You don't need to do more than that when you first start out. You don't need to try to pressure the point. You don't want to pressure the point. You want to put this horse into this, what we call a piaf, and put him to sleep. You want him to be to where the he stands there and you can eat some soup, and that's what you're after. Minimum aid, maximum performance, as you heard Robert say and Jessica. You want to be, make sure that there's a clear understanding of what's, what's, what's being asked of him. Don't get caught up in the idea that I have to make him do this. Because when you do, you're going to go backwards fast. There are some dangers that you need to be careful of. If you find that tension is accumulating when you're doing this, you'll notice that the sign will be sometimes not the expression of tension, but a dissipation in rhythm in the walk. The walk will have a tendency to become a tendency to lose its rhythm. Be careful, go off into the canter if that happens. Do some circles in the canter, ride him a little bit forward carefully, bring him back, tuning from the walk. What I do to see whether the horses collect the walk just a little bit more, give him some half faults. Don't bend his neck so much to the inside, please. Keep him straighter. Is to test them to see whether he's aware of the driving aids and what the aids are for Piaf. I'll say, get the collected walk. Now try a little bit from the walk. Try a little bit of Piaf from the walk. Little whip. Little whip. Come on, again. Yeah, a little more. Pat him. Good. If you have a horse that is not correctly on the aids in the walk, when you pick up the reins, I guarantee you're going to get a jig. It's not Piaf. So it's really important that you school the horse in the correct contact and ride him with a circle of the eight is correct in the walk, that he is ridden up on the outside rein, as I told her to do, keeping the right rein, and don't get sucked in to trying to do Piaf because the horse is jigging. Okay, because you're going to have a lot of trouble. You won't be able to get the collected walk. The back of the horse will be too tight. The crest of the neck of the horse will be too tight. You won't be able to do the transitions. You'll only be able to do that one individual jig. Okay, I'm going to help her just a little bit. Halt. And before you do any of this from the ground, so that you create and understanding you should always walk up to the front of the horse, let him smell of you. It becomes instinctive after a while that you've done it. Let him smell of you a little bit, pat him, and then wherever you're going to use the whip on the horse in that area, then step back to it. Okay? And when you step away, see he just gave a nice big sigh, which is great. He's under, he's under, he knows that I'm not here to hurt him or kill him or beat him from the ground. And if he's real sensitive, 
because I know him, so I'm not too worried whether he's going to strike at me or anything. Go ahead, try it. Good, pat him, pat him. Oh. Now, we've done a lot of this already, so I'm going to ask Tooney to take him out and I'll transfer this on to schooling him in a more forward idea and try to push him forward a little bit more. Oh. Do a little bit of canter with him and just loosen him up a little bit. It's one thing to know the correction. The next is to know how much. The most important is to know when to cease. And if you watch this rider, she's very, very a super rider. She really feels the horse's emotion through the whip, and she immediately adjusts. If you consider how many trot steps you do in the ring in trotting and how much work you do in the hour of work that you do, how many corrections do you give the horse? If you were to add them all up, how many times do you reward the horse? Is it equal amount? It's no way. It's a lot less. Hold. Okay. This horse is a little bit more advanced. So I'm going to ask Sharon just to collect him a little bit. You don't want to school passage and Piaf at the same time. You want to get the Piaf first establish its understanding with the horse, make sure the horse is going forward and he has a clear understanding and he's not doing the piaf out of tension. He's not doing it out of fear of the leg and he's not doing it out of fear of the whip because you're going to have trouble. So once the piaf is established, you can very easily, the passage is very, very easy to get. It's not a big deal. Can you walk forward, please? And when you're ready, try a little bit of piaf from the walk. Patting, hold. Now, there is, there's a lot of places you can tap the horse with the whip that can really bring the horse to life. The most important thing, I can't emphasize this enough, I'm going to say it again. When you touch the horse with the whip, you should be able to feel his body in the whip coming to you on how he received the understanding of the whip. Some horses will take, take the whip very nicely, usually on the legs down here or something like this, or on the top of the tail. I have found that some horses, by touching them just under the belly, gets a greater response than ever hitting them on the croup. Because the, the body is, is a mass of extensor and flexor muscles, you do not want to tighten those muscles, to work, have them working against each other. You hit a heavy mass that has a lot of muscle and nerves, you're going to make the horse tighten up, I promise you. And you'll see that the cadence and the rhythm of the piaf dissipates because of it. I, many times, will take the whip and touch the horse on the, the neck here. And he knows this. Go forward. Just by tapping him, go ahead. Go forward and try a little bit of piaf. Careful of your hands. Careful. Supple him a little bit. You can see right away, huh? It didn't make the horse restrict in the movement of the leg, he actually came to life. The other thing is the rider can reach up and pat him a little bit and talk to him. And again, I, I, I think it's real important. When they give us this much, you need to give them that much in return. <laughs>